except we had a lot of great lobbying efforts. We have 11 pages of lobbying efforts at the back of this bill, all right? All of the exceptions in there, first of all, let me, let me make this really clear. The law that has been in place since April of 2018 is the ABC test. The law, the Dynamex decision does not talk about exceptions. They're done. So if this 2750.3 fails, there are no exceptions to the ABC test. Just let you know that. So the exceptions are only contained in Labor Code section 2750.3. And what the, what the Labor Code section says is, you know, even though the, there are these exceptions that you can fall under to this ABC test, if, even if you fall under one of those exceptions, it's not carte blanche. If you fall under one of those exceptions, you still have to satisfy the Borrello standard, meaning the totality of the circumstances and a written contract. Now there are two types of exceptions. I call them, this is my terminology, I call them unconditional and conditional. Unconditional is a misnomer because you still have to satisfy the Borrello standards. But what I mean by conditional and unconditional are the unconditional, well let's talk about it, let's look at them. In the unconditional exceptions, you have little or no restriction, and the only issue is the occupation itself and the qualification of the occupation of itself. Give me examples. They're doctors, dentists, psychologists, lawyers, accountants, architects, engineers, um, licensed insurance brokers, licensed securities brokers, real estate agents and salespeople, investment advisors. All of those occupations are regulated by an industry. Right, we all, uh, me, myself included, answer to an organization like a state bar that can pull your license. So that's why probably these do not have conditions on them because you have conditions just to practice. Let's talk about the conditional exceptions and there are many, many more conditional exceptions than there are unconditional exceptions. Conditional exceptions are where they name a specific occupation that it can fall under, that is an exception to the ABC test, but then you have to satisfy after that a number of, again, the indicia of independent contractor relationship. All right? So let me give you an example, and, and of course it is the hiring bar, uh, uh, party's burden to show, absolutely again, so at any rate, so I'll give you some examples of the of a of a uh, what I call a conditional sales exception. People. What it really means is you got to read it. It means MLM salespeople selling to consumers in their homes. Okay, you could have commercial fishermen. Boy, that must have been a strong lobby. Real estate contractors and subcontractors, referral agency services. I think there are about I think there are about eight or nine different conditions you have to satisfy before you can be a real, before you can get the exception as a referral agency service. All right, there are two exceptions that I want to talk about specifically because they are the broadest exceptions and they are the exceptions that most of your independent contractors will fall into or we could wangle into. That's a professional legal term, wangle. All right, so, the professional service exception gives you a list of specific services, 10 or 15 of them, all right? Those services include things like um, a, a marketing professional, an HR professional. I'm gonna keep telling you this, I, I can't even tell, stress it more. An HR professional, a graphic designer, a copywriter, fine artist, still photographer. I, right in here in still photographer, I'm sorry, Andrew. Um, my, my video guy, specifically in the statute, they exclude videography, moving pictures, specifically. You can't get an exception for videography services except under a different exception. We'll talk about that in a moment. But, but essentially, if you fall under the professional services exception, 
you're going to have to satisfy or prove as a hiring party that you meet five specified criteria that are listed in the professional <coughs> services exception exception. Okay? The second one I want to talk about is the business to business exception. That is by far the broadest exception in, in 2750.3. It's going to be used by most people. But because it is the broadest exception in there, they have the highest indicia and criteria that you must meet and you must satisfy. All right? One thing I want to point out about this section right here. Everybody thinks that this section might at some point be a panacea. I will tell you that this section, if not done correctly, you'll go down in flames. Because this section is very, very clear that entity status alone is not enough. Meaning the fact that you're doing business with an, LL, an individual that is an LLC or a corporation, that, that, that's one of the 12 criteria. All right? It's not going to save you. All right. Again, um, if you're in a situation where certainly where you're falling into one of the exceptions or believe you fall into one of the exceptions, very important to have professional legal or professional HR consult you on this. It's very easy to mess up. 